Good morning, everyone. Praise God. Once again, he's awakened us and blessed us with this opportunity to walk this earth. And he's walking with us, promising never to leave or forsake us, empowering us to have victory over all circumstances, trusting him is our solution for every problem. Just trust him. Trust him. Speak to him. Turn over to him your cares. And he will make a way for you. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we come to you this morning submitting our will to you because you are the creator of all that exists even us you've created in your image father we thank you we thank you for the love and care that you show us each and every day as you awaken us to a new opportunity to continue our relationship with you trusting in you to provide a way out of no way to give us the strength to carry on, to lighten our path, and to be our God. Thank you, Father, and help us to understand and learn more about you and your ways through the study of your word and through prayer and meditation, through fasting, through submitting to your will. We ask in Jesus' mighty name you hear this prayer. Pray it glorifies you. Amen. Okay, this morning our one word description of the daily devotional is submit. The word submit. <clears throat> and the devotional is from the book of Matthew, chapter 4, verses 18 through 22. Matthew 4, verse 18 through 22. And it says, And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon, called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on from thence, he saw other two brother, brethren, excuse me, James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, in a ship with Zebedee their father, mending their nets. And he called them. And they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. Submit. That's the one word description of those uh, verses. Those four individuals, two sets of brothers, submitted to the call of Jesus Christ. He's calling you this day. Are you submitted to him? Have you submitted your will to him? your ways to his ways or are you still living your life your way we're called to submit okay finishing up this week's lesson we're in section 3 and it says Anna proclaims Christ a devout prophetess and our reference is Luke chapter 2 verses 36 and 37 it says, And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Falu, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age and had lived with a husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about four score and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. 
Oh my God. Okay, the commentary says in Luke's, in reading Luke's narrative, it is apparent that women have a significant place in the story of redemption. The voices and experiences of Elizabeth, Mary, and Anna are significant witnesses to the gospel of Christ. The name Anna is derived from Hannah, which means grace. Anna was the namesake of Hannah, the mother of Samuel. See 1 Samuel 1.20. Both women were devout maidservants of the Lord. Although Hannah is not named as a prophetess, she functioned as one. See Samuel chapter 2 verses 1 through 10. Anna is introduced as a prophetess. Luke 2.36 That is, she was a woman inspired of the Holy Spirit to speak the word of the Lord. There are four named prophetesses in scripture. My, Miriam, the sister of Moses, see Exodus 15.20 Deborah, see Judges 4.4 4. Haluda. Hmm. Second Kings twenty two fourteen and Anna. Nehemiah six fourteen and Jezebel, Revelations two and twenty, are named as false prophetesses. Also, there are at least five unnamed prophetesses, the wife of Isaiah, Isaiah eight three and the four daughters of Philip the Evangelist, Acts 21, verses 8 through 9. The point is that at least since the time of Moses, God has anointed women to speak the word of the Lord. With the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, there is an expected increase of daughters who prophesy. See Joel 2:28. So it is not surprising that Luke's birth narrative includes the witness of Anna the prophetess. Anna is of the tribe of Asher, which is one of the ten lost tribes of Israel. The lost tribes are those who were deported by the Assyrians after the defeat of the northern kingdom of Israel in 721 B.C and amalgamated with other peoples. According to tradition, the women of Asher were noted for beauty and talent. By the first century, some families of Asher had settled in the region of Galilee. Anna was of a great age. If she was married at puberty, 12 years old, which was typical, married for seven years, and widowed for 84 years, Anna was 103 years old. In the ancient world, men and women of great age were revered, and their testimony was viewed as even more credible. During her long life, Anna witnessed many traumatic events. A civil war between the kings of Judea in 67 BC the Roman occupation of Palestine, 63 BC, the appointment of Herod the Great as governor of Galilee, 47 BC, the king of and king of Judea in 40 BC, the Parthian invasion of Judea, 40 BC, the conquest of Judea by Herod the Great, 37 BC, a powerful earthquake in Judea, 31 BC inherits rebuilding and restoration of the second temple of Jerusalem in 19 BC. Hannah lived during turmoilous, turmoilous times, turbulous times, turbulous times. Glad I got that word right. Anna departed not from the temple 
She apparently lived on the temple grounds and likely served on the temple staff. She served God with fastings and prayers. Fastings is associated with lament, complaint, and protest. This type of prayer is common throughout the Psalms. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am pinning away. Heal me, O Lord, for my soul is greatly dismayed. But you, O Lord, how long? Return, O Lord, rescue my soul. <clears throat> this is from Luke 6, verses 2 through 4, I believe. All right, considering Anna's long experience with the sufferings of this present time, her fastings and prayers demonstrated her anxious longing for redemption. See Romans 8. Verses 18 and 19. Okay. Section 3b. Words of Hope. Luke chapter 2 verse 38. And it says. And she coming in that instant. Gave thanks likewise. Unto the Lord. And spake to him. To all them that looked for redemption. In Jerusalem. <coughs> commentary says upon seeing Jesus and hearing the words of Simeon Anna offered spontaneous praise and began to prophesy to all of them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem Anna's long life of suffering did not diminish her hope for redemption with the advent of the Christ Anna's lament Complaint and protest gave way to thanksgiving. The words of Isaiah 51 3 express Anna's deep emotions. Indeed, the Lord will comfort Zion. Joy and gladness will be found in her. Thanksgiving and sound of a melody. The phrase redemption in Jerusalem, in Luke 2 38, is synonymous with Simeon's hope. For the consolation of Israel. Luke portrays Simeon and Anna as aged saints who suffered much but never lost hope. Amen. Okay, the conclusion is titled The Right Response. It says the birth and subsequent dedication of Jesus represents a transition of salvation history in the Bible from Old Covenant to New Covenant from a generation of hope to a generation of fulfillment Luke's writings demonstrate how the coming of the Christ was a fulfillment of Joel's promise of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit the Spirit inspired dreams, visions and angelic visitations Spirit-inspired songs were sung and prophetic words proclaimed. In Luke's two books, the Gospel and Acts, the outpouring of the Spirit begins in the birth narrative, Luke 1 and 2, and is consummated in the climactic outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost in Acts 2. Luke's birth narrative lays the hopeful foundation that Christ is the Savior of all nations. Acts tells the story of the Gentiles' inclusion into the people of God through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in Acts 10 and Acts 15. For 2,000 years, the message has been proclaimed. Today, the Holy Spirit continues to move and people are called to respond. Like Mary, we ponder the meaning of it all. Like Simeon and Anna, we are faithfully looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Christ Jesus. See Titus 2.13. This 
birth narrative of, of Jesus Christ and our response to it has been the focus of this lesson. And as you could see in this lesson, um, many people saw Jesus as the Messiah and worshipped him as the Messiah. Because they were inspired by the Holy Spirit and enlightened to the truth of who he was. And so are we. Enlightened to the truth of who Jesus is by the Holy Spirit. And our proper response is to proclaim Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And to serve him and walk with him so that we would not walk on the path of the destruction any longer. We could be redeemed by the Father, our Creator. Thank you for your time. I pray that uh, you spend time with your family this Christmas holiday and um, you're blessed and you're encouraged and you have hope for a brighter future because one day our Savior is going to return and we will endure uh, his blessings and his covering until he returns. Thank you. Thank you. Be blessed.